to. All right, we're off and running. There we go. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'd like to call the May 23rd meeting of the Litchfield Board of Selectmen to order at 6 o'clock p.m. Chairman Byron is on an excused absence. I will make a valiant attempt to fill his shoes. Uh, and I'd like to start off by first uh, having a Pledge of Allegiance. Please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, the board is just coming out of a paperwork review process. Um, we will move to the consent items. In the consent items folder are the minutes of the May 9th meeting, uh, non-public meeting minutes of May 9th. There's an accounts payable manifest for May 13th of $181,714.72 and a May 24th manifest for $57,000 $57,408.84. We also have a payroll manifest from 519.16 of $50,698.03 and 526.16 for $53,868.61. And we also, to everyone's uh, joy, uh, the property tax warrant on May 16th of $8,897,000. $237. Is there any of the items that any of the members would like removed from the consent agenda? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion we approve as read. Mr. Burnell makes a motion to approve the items for consent. Is there a second? So moved. Seconded by Mr. Perry. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 4-0-0. Okay, moving on, are there any additional items any member of the board would like discussed? Hearing none, we move on. Uh, public input may occur earlier than 6.30 tonight, um, but we will move on with regular business. Uh, first <laughs> item is we have a Recreation Commission interview Boy, he's optimistic. and appointment he's optimistic. for Michael Boschi. Did I say it right? Boschi. Boschi? Yep. Um, for a regular member, and the term expires 331 2019. Join us at the table, Michael. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you for offering to do this. And um, any members of the board wish to uh, ask Mr. Bosky some questions? How you doing? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> Are you crazy? How do, how do you feel you can best add to the Recreation Commission? Um, I think over my course of time in town, I've Volunteer, I've been on boards of different sports organizations, basketball, soccer, lacrosse, um, involved in coaching baseball <coughs> as well. And uh, I mean, I've been involved with trying to help out at different times with our, on the, by attending rec commission meetings, uh, commenting on fields and possible improvements and um, events that they have off and on. So um, I think it's just a general continuation of what I, try to volunteer around town in what I do, so. I just want to say thank you, you know, for coming in to, you know, stepping up and do this. It's it's good to have, you know, volunteers like yourself, you thank know, you. want to be part of the committee, so. I echo that, and um, the Recre Recreation Commission especially is, you know, they've done a lot of work. They're a great bunch of people, and, and we, we count on them um, quite counting them a lot to um, deliver and to administer the programs that we have right. in town for a town our size and thank you for offering to do that believe it or not for the cost wise some of those fields that we have are some of the highest cost items this town owns mm -hmm. oh I so yeah maintaining them is yeah. pretty important right. so right. Mike's always done a really good job of that being uh, on the board for soccer and the president for a while. I don't know if you still are. Still are for soccer, yeah. And um, he's always been very diligent in going out to the fields, moving nets, making sure people play on different sections so that certain parts don't get beat down. He's always 
when I was on the Rec Commission, made sure he came in and told them they needed to make sure people stayed off certain areas, tried to prepare them for field maintenance when they'd be able to be off the fields for the longest time possible. I think it's going to be a great fit. I really do. So I'd say thank you as well. Thank you. Well, certainly uh, you come with glowing recommendations. I will entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve Mike Bosky for a full member to the Rec Commission with a term expiring 331 of 19. Mr. Perry moved. Second. Seconded by Mr. Brunel. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 400. Congratulations. Welcome. And again, thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank so you. No, you know you'll have to just get sworn in at, okay. at the town clerk Great. at some point before that next meeting. Okay. Well, we have to have a, we have to have his appointment papers, don't we? Yeah, it's in his appointment papers. In there, it's in there. Okay. Yep. Do you know how many open positions they had? We just looked that up. They just say uh, yeah, it was. A when you, when you came for we went and looked it up. Yeah. I, I want to say it was. I want to say it was two because. Did you see? Um, um, the last regular. Oh, was that you? No, I think you just it might be, but I think I thought sketch. Sandy was. Sandy wanted to become an alternate, and I don't know if that was in the count or not in the count. So. John, do you want to sign that? And we yes, could probably please. give it to him. And, yes, could he please. take that over tonight? She's not there. Oh, well, Pat, Pat's there. Pat's yeah. There. yeah. Is that okay? I th yeah. They close at 6, don't they? Yeah. Oh. Okay, I'll, I can come. Okay. I can come back. I'll All right. Point. Okay. Let me leave it in here, Trey. Sure. Okay. Uh, you can take it with you. It doesn't matter. Way way. Way. It's, okay. If you don't care, I'll leave it with Terry tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. And we'll we can call Terry. I'll be here. Okay. okay. Then he doesn't have to be worried about it. Losing it. <laughs> Thank you. My responsibility. Remember to give it. Thank to you. Him. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Take Thank it you easy, very Mike. Much. Thank you. Off to practice. How, how, which practice are you going to? Across the night. How are they doing? Pretty good. Yeah. I'm a solid this year, so. Good. Okay. Nathan's ready to play again. Brandon keeps talking, saying he wanted to talk him into it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank Take you. it easy. Take Okay, uh, next item is a draft resolution authorizing the dissolution of the Litchfield Cable Advisory Committee. Um, do we need to have Mr. Penthony up or is it? You want to step up or? Um, I, Richard and I have been working together. Um, we wanted to bring this forward this evening just as just to initiate the uh, a formal discussion. Okay. We've had discussions in prior meetings, but uh, we've not really brought anything to the board. Um, as a formal um, item that you could discuss and um, possibly uh, eventually um, approve. So I thought where this was a, a fairly substantial change, um, dissolving a committee and creating the, the manager to run the cable operations, uh, essentially really becoming a department head, although um, you know be limited a number of hours. Um, that's why I, I drafted the resolution. Uh, to have a formal process. The, the board, um, <coughs> we've talked in the past about possibly having a public hearing before we take any action on this item, just to gather input from citizens to see if uh, they have any comments or suggestions about taking this action. It's not required by law. The, the uh, Cable Advisory Committee was created by the Board of Selectmen and um, you can dissolve the committee uh, at your own um, wishes and desires. Um, so you have attached the resolution um, and also attached as a draft job description for the position. Uh, Richard and I are still working on amending the, um, the charter, uh, which would basically come with some modifications, would be provide a good overall description of what the department would look like, the responsibilities of the department, and also outlining some of the other positions that would be reporting uh, to Richard. So I guess, you know, a couple of things here is one, just having general discussion to see if this is something, the, the direction that the board wants to go in. As I said, we've had some discussion, but not really had uh, any formal um, action from the board. Um, there was some question and concern about who would Richard be reporting to? Is he going to report to the Board of Selectmen or is he going to report to the town administrator? Um, and then I think we're still probably, uh, as far as salary, 
goes, the number of hours that you would work uh, per week and the hourly rate. Those are some of the areas that, you know, I know we need to address if we're going to go. So we, we actually could do this in segments, correct? Definitely. I, I, again, it's, it's at the board's um, desire if you want to hold the public hearing or not, um, but that's usually when you're taking a step like this. It's a wise thing to do just to collect uh, any input from citizens before you take any action. Um, so I would suggest that you have your job description in final form, that we have the, the charter document revised, uh, that the resolution, you're comfortable with the wording in the resolution. All those things in place, the board's comfortable with it before you go to public hearing. Um, and then after that, um, based on the input you receive, you take action. Uh, so it's the resolution itself, it's pretty much in final draft. Yeah, that's unless there's some disagreement with any of the whereases. And what, what I was thinking, I would just read it for the public's sure. sake, uh, you know, just to get this out there. Sure. All right, whereas the March 18th, 1978 annual town meeting authorized the Board of Selectmen to franchise and regulate a cable television system pursuant to Chapter 53-C of the New Hampshire Revised Statutes Annotated, and whereas the Board of Selectmen created the Litchfield Cable Advisory Committee to negotiate a cable franchise agreement, rectify cable TV-related complaints, and oversee the town's public, education, and government cable program and activities, and whereas the cable franchise agreement and the town's public, education, and government cable TV program have been in place for several years, whereas the Litchfield Cable Advisory Committee has been inactive and a majority of the members agree the committee has served its purpose and recommends that it be dissolved and to hire a manager to monitor the cable franchise agreement and to oversee the town's public education and government cable TV program. And whereas town's public education and government cable program and activities are funded with cable franchise fee revenue and can be used to pay for equipment and staff. Now therefore be it resolved that the Litchfield Cable Advisory Committee which is not mandated by law and served as an advisory committee to the Board of Selectmen is hereby dissolved and the Board of Selectmen hereby rescinds all appointments to the Litchfield Cable Advisory Committee effective upon adoption of this resolution. And be it further resolved that the Board of Selectmen create the position of LCTV manager and appoint Richard Penthony to perform the position's duties and responsibilities in accordance with the attached, attached job description. So, um, input from the board. That's the direction we talked about. So. Sure, go, right. So, do you want to hold off on it and put everything together and go for a public hearing when we get the uh, job description and everything all set? Yeah, I, I thought we said we had to do the public hearing. We were saying we don't have to now, right? I think it would. I think it's wise. Personally, I think it's wise to do that. Yeah. I'm, I'm on board with that. Yes, yeah, solicit fine. input. From I the would board. agree completely, but do we want to draw up the job description and have council review it before we have that meeting? I think well, it might be a good idea, don't you think? Yes. Yeah, the job description is here. Right. Order. Okay, so when you're ready, uh, when that, bring it back to the board. The and, we'll have, and then we will schedule a public hearing and move okay. forward. It's still draft. Right. So, I'm, has the job description been reviewed by anybody yet? I mean, it's here in draft. Uh, just, just from taking yourselves. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So why don't we do that? Have it reviewed, and when you're all set, when we have everything together, um, schedule a public hearing, or bring it back to us. Then we'll schedule a public hearing and take the input, and then we'll take a final vote. And it is the intention to fund the position out of the the impact the uh, peg fees, right? Oh, right. It's, okay. Yep. Everyone on board with that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we'll all set. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Continue to work on it. We we didn't want to get too far down the path. Sure. Uh, unless we knew this is exactly the way the board was. No, I'm uh, I'm all set with it. I mean, I think we clearly understand we have to we have to dissolve it, right? The committee's right. not working. You can't run a regular meeting because there's not enough room for a quorum. <laughs> We've got to put them in a form of management that works going forward, and this is the way to do it. Right. So. Okay. Right. Any questions? Do you, do you have of the board? Uh, I don't at this time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any questions, members of the board? Nope. All set? Okay. okay. Thank you, Dick, for coming. Thank you. We'll work on that when we have further information.
So we'll get together for later in the week. Yeah. Get it for a little bit. I think we should shoot for Wednesday. So to talk to me offline. Okay. Uh, item three: discussion regarding street opening moratorium. Mr. Brown. Okay. We put this on the agenda as a result of <clears throat> a discussion we had Friday afternoon with Penichuk Waterworks. Um, and you know, Chairman Byron was there, road agent. Um, we were talking with about the potential um, installation of the water main services to mm -hmm. the areas that are impacted by the uh, PFOA contaminants. And again, there's you know, the way this is going to work is St. Gobain, once they get the engineering cost estimates and, and uh, design plans. Um, they'll be considering that as one of the possible uh, remediation, you know, alternatives uh, to, to deal with the issue. And it appears that the discussion we're having is that we would, once all this work is done in our streets, that there would be a complete resurface of the streets within one year after the work's been done. In our discussions with Penichuk, um, you know, in other towns, they have uh, street opening permits, trench permits and stuff. And one of the things that's covered in there is towns have um, restrictions. If they've just done major construction on a road, that unless it's an emergency situation, uh, they have a moratorium on issuing these trench permits. Mm -hmm. So people or utilities are required to do directional boring under the road, um, but they're not able to cut the pavement. Again, if it's an emergency situation where you have a broken water main, sewer line, or something like that, obviously you can issue, you know, you issue the trench permit. But any new construction that comes forward, um, expansion of services, that type of stuff, um, would have to wait a period of five to seven years, uh, or look at the other types of engineering alternatives like uh, the directional boring. We don't have something in place in writing in this town and we thought we should at least bring the concept to the board, see if it's something you think we should have in place um, in case, you know, it's, and to be honest with you, it, it really doesn't have much to do with this project. It could, you know, go along with all the projects that we just, you know, we have in our town where we just paved the streets this year. Um, you know, Cutler, for example. This would prevent um, people from coming forward with certain um, development plans and cutting into that road after we've just spent a lot of money to pave. Members of the board? I've heard the good and the bad of this. I mean, the bad side of it is, hypothetically, you could pave a road three years down the line you have a business that wants to come in and we're going to say no because our road was paved three years ago? I mean, that's pretty ridiculous. What we should do is have something more in line that would say if the road's inside of this time frame, it would have to be redone. Not just patched. Yeah. Well, the, I believe that's the intent, yeah, isn't it? In fact, um, I've seen some samples. That's what I want to make sure of. Right. Because right. Some, I, I've seen some sample documents and, and you're right. Um, so if you have some type of new development, there would be a standard as to how they're going to do the road opening. Mm -hmm. um, and towns do it all differently, but I know talking with Jack, what he's done in this town, um, he calls it an infrared um, process where they actually, uh, in the area that you do the trenching, you heat up the existing pavement and the new pavement, and it just kind of all blends together, and you roll it, and you know you have some different in color, but as far as seams, virtually no seams. Um, so what does Jack think? In the meeting we were at, he, he felt it was, um, you know, something we should have. So would members of the board like the town administrator to bring some proposals forward to us in the next couple of weeks? Seems like the most logical step. Yeah. 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 Okay. Work with Jack on that. Oh, yeah, Jack and I work together. Why not, yeah, why don't you bring some something forward and we'll we'll go. We'll see how it goes. All right. Thank you. 
Policy review, uh, fund balance policy. All right, so for the next, um, the next three items that we have listed on the agenda, the fund balance policy, records retention, and reconciliation policy. Um, I've reviewed these policies. I don't, I've not found anything that uh, requires any changes. Uh, the good, solid policies. Um, let's bring it forward to the board and, uh, for any comments. So there are no changes on any of the three? Nothing recommended, no. Is the board comfortable with voting them as a block? Yeah. I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion that we uh, accept the policy as written uh, for fund balance. Uh, records. records, yeah, what was Retent the other one? Records, records retention. Yeah, I can't really see that yeah. right now, so. So all three, right? Yep. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Perry. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries 4-0-0. Next item, administrative report. Mr. Brown. Well, <clears throat> other than uh, doing a lot of work in the last week and a half with uh, uh, Penichuk and New Hampshire DES, um, you know, we have our meeting tomorrow night. Uh, it's a very important meeting for homeowners that are impacted, who have the private wells and, and have been impacted by the uh, POFA FFA contamination. Um, so it's a, a, um, a flyer has been hand delivered to every homeowner in the area, informing them of the meeting. Uh, it's very important that homeowners uh, go to the meeting to learn about um, what Penichuk's role is going to be in the design of this water line extension. And uh, the, the critical part of the design is for Penichuk or one of their contracted employees to actually physically um, get on your property and get into your house and uh, really do an assessment of how uh, the, the water line currently goes into your home. And if we were going to extend public service from the street, you know, what are the, um, how would that be, be accomplished? Knowing that we have landscaping, you have leach fields, you have swimming pools, um, there's a lot to it. Um, so this is the reason they really want to try to get into as many homes as they possibly can um, so that they can come up with a really good cost estimate of what this would cost. So that's important. Um, we sent out um, a code red notice this afternoon just to remind people of the meeting. Um, also, I just wanted to give you a report. Last week, I went to uh, the uh, Stormwater Coalition, Coalition meeting, and um, it appears that the permit <coughs> will be issued sometime this summer. Um, once the permit is issued, there'll be a one-year grace period. So, you know, we have no, we were all trying to think, you know, what, what will this cost us this year in the 2016 budget? It was pretty clear to me that uh, there will be no cost this year at all. Um, there will be a cost in our proposed 2017 budget, um, and that will be based on rules and you know requirements uh, that will be out soon, which we can really then give to an engineer or someone to build it, provide us with a real good cost estimate. But this week, um, some of the members of the coalition that we've working with the, uh, the uh, Nashua Regional Planning Commission. We're going to meet with folks at the um, City of Manchester. They have, I guess, the Southern New Hampshire Regional Planning Commission is, um, has a coalition. And we're going to see if we can get these two groups together and uh, really try to work together to try not to duplicate effort. Again, look to see if there's ways that we can save money and work together um, because everyone you know, knows it's going to cost a lot of, of money. Um, and we're fearful that... Um, Every community is going to be going off in a different direction, doing different things, and we think it, it would be better if uh, all the communities were working together, trying to develop similar programs and approaches to this. We think it would look better for um, EPA, uh, Region 1 officials that are reviewing our program. So, Great. Thank you. Anything else, sir? That's it. What time does that meeting start? Six? Uh, tomorrow night starts at 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. 
at the high school auditorium. I don't know if I said that. Okay, selectman reports. Mr. Bruno? Nothing to report. I was on vacation, so I wasn't at the last rec commission meeting, but that's coming up again, so. Okay, Mr. Perry? Uh, I went to the planning board meeting. The planning board is still working on the master plan, so again, if anybody wants to be involved in get an opinion on the mass plan, please come to the planning board and watch us work and feel free to give input. So we're looking for everybody to give input on that. That's all we've done so far. Thank you. Next meeting's next week, next Tuesday. Okay. Right. Mr. Bork? Uh, budget committee this Thursday night. Okay. So that's all I have. And I uh, attended the fire department, firefighters, uh, award ceremony uh, a week ago Friday night very nice uh, and I also uh, went over to the Conservation Commission um, fishing derby last Saturday it was uh, what a great day um, and they, they had a uh, great number of young people uh, fishing and uh, very successful they, they were saying it's probably one of the best days they've ever had in the history of the fishing derby so. wow. weather wise it was just incredible so. it's a great Great job. Uh, also, I just want to remind uh, residents that uh, Memorial Day is coming up this coming weekend. Um, on Monday, May 30th, I believe it's Monday, right? Yep. At 10 a.m., the town's observance of Memorial Day will occur. Uh, and I will just read, groups or individuals are invited to march in the Memorial Day parade. Marches will meet at Litchfield Middle School parking lot at 9.30. The parade will begin at Litchfield Middle School and end at the Historical Society building next to the fire station. The Memorial Day program will begin at this time. The Boy Scouts will perform the presentation of colors. The Campbell High School Chorus and Band will be performing. The program will close with placement of wreaths and taps. And the Historical Society building will be open to the public. So we urge all residents um, to attend and participate in the Memorial Day program for Litchfield. And that is Monday, May 30th. Anything else from members of the board? Okay, I will entertain a motion to go into non-public session. We'll do public input. I'm sorry, public, thank you, Tim. Uh, yes, it is almost 6.30 and um, there are no members of the public here, but is there any public input? Uh, Tony, any? <laughs> no. uh, hearing none, I will close the opportunity for public input. Are you trying to get some John Oliver again? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, entertain a motion to go into non-public session under RSA 91A, 32A, compensation of a public employee. And just note that when we come out of non-public, we will only come out to uh, non-public to adjourn. So at this point, when we make the motion to go into non-public, the meeting will essentially be ended. And uh, we will see you, our next meeting is June 13th, 2016. So again, I will entertain a motion. Joan. To go into non-public. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Burnell. Is there a second? Why didn't you make it? Second. When you read it. Because I'm the, the seconded by Mr. Bork. <laughs> Roll call, Mr. Burnell. Yes. Mr. Perry. I don't know. <laughs> sure. Thank you, Mr. Bork. <laughs> and I vote yes. Okay, we are now uh, considered in non-public session at 628 p.m.